Hey everyone, I wanted to make a video just explaining uh, the term zero cycle and what a zero cycle is. Um, this is a concept we've theorized about for a while, but we've never really had the tools to make uh, this idea actually work. Um, I'm making this because I'm fairly sure this is going to be a brand new, very fast, very reliable, consistent way to play end fights in uh, 1.16 speedruns, and I think it's honestly happening pretty soon. So the uh, new tool that's basically allowing us to come up with this new tech uh, a lot faster is this uh, mod from Matthew Bolin he's made in the last couple days. So big thank you to him. Um, this is the Dragon Fight Visualizer and I'll put a link to it in the description down below so you can download this and try it out in the world. Um, it's just a jar file, so you just add it to your mods folder just like you would a sodium mod uh, jar file. But um, you know, either me or, or Matthew will go over exactly what's going on and all the dragon mechanics in kind of a later video. But for this one, I just wanted to go over um, some real basics to get the gist of uh, the zero cycle down. So this uh, mod basically displays the nodes that the dragon needs to interact with in order to satisfy that it has been in a certain position. Um, and it color codes a couple things. So the purple line is where the dragon's head has been and traces out that path. And um, there are three different um, phases the dragon could be in. It's either normal phase in white, um, or it's going to be a perch or perch approach phase in blue. And then it's going to be a strafe phase uh, in red. So if I force the dragon to perch, you see it travels to nodes, and then it'll immediately perch. The blue indicates that it's a perching phase. And I am planning on making a complete speedrunner's guide to end fights at some point in the future. Um, it's going to go over all the dragon mechanics, and there's about 10 different end fight methods, and I'll go over all of them in the statistics and times uh, for all of them. But for now, um, just for the zero cycle, we basically, instead of looking at the blue perch phase, we're just going to focus on the red strafe phase and try to manipulate the dragon into strafing us and uh, basically killing it before it ever perches. So whenever the dragon finishes its current uh, path of nodes and gets to the end, it decides if it's going to continue in normal phase, which is just flying around, or if it's going to perch, or if it's going to strafe the player. It has a chance to do all three of those things, and it's based on uh, several equations. But we can also force a strafe at any time, and a strafe just means the, the dragon is going to track towards the player and uh, try to fireball it once it's facing the player, and that's it. So uh, we can either wait until the dragon finishes its current path of notes, or we can actually force it to do this ourselves. So if I shoot a crystal, you'll see instantly the path turns red, and now the dragon sets up a series of nodes um, directed towards me until it faces me and it can successfully fireball me. And so here it's, it faced me and it fireballed even though it got blocked. And so it's ended its strafe phase and now it's back to uh, normal phase as we can see the path is in white. So there's a couple ways we can manipulate this. Um, if we're hidden, then the dragon actually isn't able to fireball us. And so things get a little weird. So again, the path turns red, but now I'm just going to block myself off in glass so we can see what happens. Uh, the dragon is in strafe mode and so it's heading towards us and now the orange block which dictates the um, target block is right below the player right below my feet and so the dragon is basically circling around this target block until it either fireballs me or uh, reaches close enough to this orange block and then it will fly away and do another attempt to try to fireball me so we can basically force the dragon to circle around us in a specific position once we force a strafe by destroying a crystal. So I'm just going to show here three uh, completed end fights in survival mode using three different techniques that we've thought of so far for the zero cycle. It should be very obvious none of these are viable yet. They're either way too inconsistent or they have uh, used too many beds or the materials are a bit strange. So I'm hoping with more work and ideas from the community, we can get something working um, pretty soon. So anyway, I'm just using glass here and using the center perch. I'm using glass for visibility and I'm making a little structure for myself to hide in here at the center perch. Um, this idea is kind of nice because the bedrock is indestructible over here and so it provides a good little area to hide in and um, do this kind of pseudo one cycle. So uh, it's also nice because when the dragon dies, it immediately uh, the death animation flies up and it's, it's faster than if the dragon dies anywhere else. So uh, the key to this idea here is to uh, always keep the dragon 10 blocks above the player. The target block is at my feet right now, 
So if the dragon gets within 10 blocks, it's just going to fly away and then try to re-strafe later. So you can't let it do that. And so I'm using the knockback from each bed to keep it more than 10 blocks away. So the damage from the beds is very, very low because I have to be really far away. So this is actually a 22 bed. Uh, I know it's not viable at all, but it's kind of a nifty first idea. And I do actually uh, get this eventually. So I'll speed it up a little bit here, but uh, you know, eventually the dragon does die and you do get Technically, a um, it's like a one cycle, but it's just using a strafe instead of a perch. And so it's very slow because also the dragon isn't just rotating its head very quickly uh, like it does during a perch. It's just circling, and so it, it kind of takes a while. So this was a, a fun first idea, and uh, yeah, it's about a two-minute end fight, so honestly, not the worst. This next method is uh, a bit more viable. It uses eight beds, but some uh, bow and arrow. So uh, in this method, my idea was basically to force the dragon to get into a strafe and restrafe pattern where it circles around a single obsidian tower. And I just use the um, side of the obsidian tower in the corner of it to block the dragon's vision um, for the most part. So I basically need to destroy the crystal on top of the main tower that I'm going to be doing the cycle on and then also destroy the crystals um, on both sides so that the dragon doesn't heal during this because it does take quite a while to actually do this. So I'm basically going to pillar up to a very specific position. It's X uh, X30, Y73, and Z21. And uh, I basically get in this position, set up my little cycle spot, and then I need to force a dragon strafe. Um, you can shoot a crystal from here, but in this case I get lucky and the dragon decides to strafe me anyway. Um, and yeah, basically what's happening right now is the dragon, whenever I hit it with a bed, it is cycling back to try to strafe me, and it successfully gets to within 10 blocks of the block at my feet and then it re-strafes in a different node directly behind me and then tries to re-strafe me again. So there are specific positions that you can test. Um, I just kind of tested 20 different positions to try to get one that had a node directly behind me that the dragon decides to strafe over and over and over. And so it basically ends up just cycling around and around. So I'll speed it up again, but this ends up being an eight bed. My beds could be a lot better. My setup could be a lot better. Um, I don't actually need glass or really any blocks here. I could do the setup without it. The obsidian pillar behind me does a really good job of blocking vision and the dragon is never facing me so it can never strafe me and it just repeats in that pattern. So again, an 8 bed a little bit more reliable but still um, kind of too long. So this last uh, end fight idea is directly from Matthew Bolin and uh, it's pretty fast. I did this in uh, six beds pretty quickly. You could probably do it in less but uh, yeah the idea is to kill the dragon here before it even gets to its first node. So you can see the orange target block. Um, the dragon spawns pretty high in the air and it's trying to get it's circled down to this orange target block. So the idea is to actually just get here really fast and kill it before it even gets to that position. So uh, the issue with this one is it's very rare to get right. Uh, you can't spawn in the end with a cage of endstone. You have to get the correct obsidian pillar height here. You need the right height of that target block to spawn and you need the right position of the target block. So um, I think it's about one in several hundred to get this to actually work. It's possible in like a set seed where you already know all this stuff, you could get it to work reliably, but yeah, it's just, uh, I mean, it's pretty fast, but it's it's really rare to get working. And the dragon death animation here takes forever. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed these three kind of techniques that we've came up with. We're going to come up with a lot more, I'm sure. I already have some ideas, but yeah, if you would like to download this mod and play around with it, experiment with techniques yourself, uh, who knows? Maybe you could be the creator of the setup that just changes Minecraft end fights forever.